first I invented a electrical wiring tester, uh, which was patented in 83. And that allows me to plug into an outlet and an analysis of all the wiring and see what conditions in for its aluminum wiring, copper wiring, it doesn't matter. Electrically is what's important. So I could get the electrical signature off of it. Well, I found that there was so much wiring that was just so far out of code. I says, I can't tell people this. They can't rip out the wires and replace their wiring, so why do anything? Well, one day I was replacing a, uh, working on a dryer, a clothes dryer, and it did not have a plug outlet like you'd normally plug one into the wall. So I was working on it and I said to myself, you know, I really should go uh, trip that breaker, but I didn't. And so when I was pushing the dryer back into position after I'd worked on it, it's a heavy wire of it snaked over top of a metal strap that was inside the wall. And when it did, it cut the wire and sparks started flying everywhere. And I'm going, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I'm gonna burn down the house because all these sparks are flying in the inside of the wall. I had no fire extinguisher. There's a sink nearby, but I'm still thinking fire. All of a sudden, I, I thought, well, I'll, I'll go turn off the circuit breaker. So I ran into the garage, which is just on the other side of the wall, flipped off the circuit breaker, and came back, and it had literally burned a, a gap. You could take your little finger and just go down in, into the metal like that. And for two or three days, I really chastised myself for doing that. I said, it was really stupid. I said, you need to turn off that breaker. And then all of a sudden, I said to myself, well, why didn't the breaker trip? Why didn't the breaker trip? And so that started my path and journey to inventing the arc fault circuit breaker. I ultimately, I put a microprocessor inside this, uh, the circuit breaker. And it analyzed the currents that were passing through it, which denoted an uh, arcing signature. And then I could premature trip the breaker on arcing conditions. Mm -hmm. And that's now required, NEC code recommends that it's required by anyone who adopts NEC code in all bedrooms. Did you patent that or commercialize that? Like what happened to that? Yeah, I received a patent on that in August the 14th, uh, 2000. Easy day to remember, my birthday. Oh, well, there you go. So That's it's, uh, it's on one of those, those uh, <laughs> well, sometimes, you know, right. you get odd birthday presents. Right. But this one turned out to be okay. The engineering staff I had, we advanced that to high advancements, Lee Blanton and uh, Bob Klein and my son, Scott Spencer. We, we took that technology to a much higher level. Mm -hmm. and made it available for outlets and things this nature as well as some breakers and did a lot of patent work. Uh, ultimately, I backed away from that when I left the company and went to do something else. Uh, UL made it known to me that they were not going to allow me to produce it. And when, it, when I checked into this, basically what they said was is that I could not put my circuit breaker into anyone else's fuse box unless I pass certain things of theirs. Okay, that sounds interesting. And they says, and if the people's fuse box you're putting in changes one screw or one anything, you have to requalify again. So this was a method of them not allowing me to produce anything. When I went to Siemens, I was talking to everybody then, the Siemens, Square D's, Westinghouse, everybody. Went to Siemens. And uh, the president's coming I was meeting with, and we was chit-chatting, and I mentioned this story to him. And he said to me something kind of interesting. And he said, uh, well, yeah, that's the way we hold out foreign competition. Now, Siemens is a European company. <laughs> I says, you mean uh, the uh, Japanese-Chinese competition, not the European competition? Well, yeah, you know. But uh, so that's that. It was obvious to me. I was fighting. Uh, I would be fighting a battle if I ever tried to manufacture it and sell it. I'd be not successful. I would lose a lot of people's money if I tried it. So I just walked away from it. Why? Because I, the biggest thing was to resolve the problem. And the GE, Square D's, Westinghouse's, Siemens, and others. Uh, were very, became very active in it. I participated in a UL thing of saying, here's how you can do this. I was the only one that submitted something in that category. And so they all hooked onto it, latched onto it, and started it. I waited for a few years afterwards, and then I sued them all. I didn't sue them. My children sued them, because I'd already given all my patents to my children. So they sued all these. and. 
all of them decided yes, I was the inventor, and yes, they would be willing to settle out of court. 